we know this goes up first. We need to I think that's something. a good idea. Now that we have one fraction on both sides, we can just take the reciprocal of both sides, yeah. which means flipping both sides. Before we do that, can you see any way to simplify this right hand side? Um, the k is zero, q is zero. And what would that leave us with? Q1 over Q2. We might as well do that now to simplify our work. The k's and the q naughts cancel. Is this the answer you got? Yep. Notice that this answer makes sense. If charge one is very big, remember we want the net force to come out to zero. So if charge one is very big, we're, we want the distance from charge one to also be big, so that force won't get to be too, get to be too big. So this is basically saying that the bigger the charge, the further away you need to be from that so that one charge doesn't overwhelm the other one in net force. Notice how this problem is kind of leading us along step by step. First it asked us to find the force from one charge, then the force from the other charge, and then it asked us to set that net force equal to zero. And again, we could never have done this unless we had put the negative sign here and the positive sign here. All right, well, why don't we try finishing this up? Now we have a new charge 3 at coordinates 0, d2, and d3, and a charge of positive q3. And what's the question asking us for? Um, the force on particle 0 because do from this charge. charge. You want the force from here on here. So we're ignoring the other two charges now. So it looks like I made a mistake. I said that one of these coordinates was d2. But actually, they're using the same coordinate for both the z and the x-axis, and the y-axis, d2 and d2. That looks like a good start, then, what you've drawn. So both the y component and the x component of the distance are d2. Just square the two, 
That's right. The square root of d2 squared is just d2, so we can take that out of the square root. Let's catch up with each other in here. So you were figuring out the magnitude of the overall force. For r squared, well, we already knew r squared was 2d squared. So we can just plug that in over here. And now it looks like you're making a force triangle. This represents the overall force. So let's put the arrows on this overall force. What's the question asking us for? The force. The force on which, on who? On uh, on particle three. Right. Were you drawing the force on particle three? Yeah. Right. We probably a while ago should have written down. It's always good to label the question with the question marks. We don't forget about that. So they're asking us for the force of charge three on charge zero. So now this is the direction of the force. Because charge three is pushing charge zero away, they re they're repelling each other. That's very good technique that you're plugging in the signs immediately here, because that's the part that's easiest to forget. This is the overall force. Now, what we have done previously to find the angles is use, say, inverse trig functions here. Well, you could still do that. You could still say that this angle is the inverse tangent of d2 over d2. Actually, it should be obvious how big this angle is. Oh, 45. Because this is an isosceles triangle. Yeah. So how big is this angle? 